When I was in like fifth grade or so, the, the, I guess the thing to do at one point with the, at least the boys in the class was to become blood brothers with another boy in the class. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it's probably a good thing. So it, it meant like pricking your, your finger, you know, with a, like a needle each and then like sort of touching the blood so that it that mingled. So I'm not, I'm not advocating this. I think we were not as aware of bloodborne pathogens back then. We also sat in the back seat of station wagons, you know, all that kind of dangerous stuff. But at an age when, you know, you start to distinguish friends from best friends, from next to best friends, and there's this pecking order that's starting to develop, you know, even though we didn't quite get it, it seemed like a good idea to, to not, like, miss out you know, to shore up not being left out. So today, in our readings, you're here for the most holy body and blood of Christ. We hear a lot about blood and about covenant. Now, covenant is not like a contract, kind of 50-50, you do your part, I'll do mine. A covenant is this all-in relationship. And a covenant like, brings people into become part of your family who weren't part of your family before, like marriage, like adoption. It's, it's that kind of all-in, uh, part of the same family kind of a thing. And in the ancient uh, times, a lot of times a covenant was marked by some kind of um, blood ritual. Now, blood symbolized life, the whole the life uh, lifeblood of any, any creature. And blood also symbolized unity, like being part of a family. You know, people talk about, you know, my own flesh and blood. So here we have, in our first reading, God making this covenant with his people through Moses. And so they have, they've already, you know, left Egypt, crossed the Red Sea. Uh, the Lord had given Moses the Ten Commandments, so like the, the family rules, so to speak. And um, he builds this altar to worship the Lord and then, we, and, then the, and then the blood starts flowing. So we see that he's, he takes half the blood and he dumps it on the altar. And he takes the rest of it and he sprinkles it on the people. It was like a Quentin Tarantino movie. There was just like blood everywhere. <laughs> of course, the altar symbolized God. Of course, the people were the people. And so when Moses took the same blood and put it on the altar and then put it on the people, it was a way of saying that God and the people were then sharing the same blood you know they were they were they were blood brothers and sisters they were they were part of god's family now blood also could symbolize um or did symbolize in this in this covenant making what they would do is they would, to be more gruesome they would take animals kind of cut them in half you know put them apart that's where they got the blood and then like walk between it as a way of saying if i if i break the covenant and this is what's going to happen to me. I'm going to end up split. I'm going to end up kind of dead. So the people were like, you know what? This is great. Uh, Moses reads the, the family rules. They have the covenant. And we heard the people say, everything the Lord has said, we'll do. We're on board with. You know, it's awesome. So uh, Moses goes back to, to powwow with God up on the mountain. And not too long after, the people make the golden calf. And they worship the golden calf, and the whole thing just kind of falls apart already. But God, because he's God, is always going to be faithful. He's always going to be faithful to his covenants, plural, because he kept having to make them with his people, because, you know, that's just sort of all the way we are, I guess. So eventually, he brings in uh, his son, uh, Jesus, who we heard in the letter to the Hebrews, has this blood of his, his covenant. Where it says he didn't come into the, the true tabernacle and the true worship space, even of heaven, with the blood of, of bulls and, and calves and goats like they, they used to do, but is his own blood. That's the amazing thing about this covenant that Jesus came to finalize forever, is that in his, in his being fully God, this covenant involves God and God not God and just weak humanity, but also in his fully human nature, Jesus offers this 
blood of the covenant that's, that's his own. That is his own, not the blood of some other creature meant to symbolize something. So all this put together then, we can recall when we hear Jesus' words that we, that we hear so often at Mass. This is my blood of the covenant. This is my blood of the covenant. In Exodus 24, we heard Moses say this is the blood of the covenant. It's the only time in the Old Testament that phrase is used. Then Jesus says this is my blood of the covenant. That through his own um, life, he's going to bring us life. Including in, in our waywardness and, and the only other way that we just sort of struggle in this covenant. God is always faithful and he continues to look to put his life into us. And so as we uh, encounter Christ here in the Mass today and, and every Sunday in the sacrament of his body and blood, let us indeed enter into this sacrifice of thanksgiving. Glad that the Lord continues to fill us with his very self, who despite it all continues to look to build us up into his own flesh and blood.